Hi everybody, Sandy Sandy here. Today I'm going to show you how to sketch with alcohol ink. But first I wanted to talk to you a little bit about my feelings about learning how to draw. I firmly believe that drawing is an important skill needed for sharpening many abilities as an artist. Learning to draw is learning how to really see. Your drawing style is as personal as your handwriting and it is what sets you apart and makes you unique. It highlights your personality and your creativity. Nobody improves or finds their style without practice. Mistakes are your best friends as an artist. Draw with the purpose of making mistakes. Ignore perfection. You want mistakes. Mistakes are what you should go for. Mistakes are your best friends. They don't lie to you and they tell you what you need to know. Cherish them. Look at them for what they are. They are you and you need them. Every time you make a mistake and you see it, you should be happy. Start looking for mistakes. Make them on purpose. Train yourself. Practice making mistakes until you are comfortable with them. Nothing comes for free except for the gift of mistakes. Find something you're curious or passionate about. Explore your interests as a basis for your artwork. This will help give your artwork a specific direction and focus. And it will allow you to use your voice as an artist to develop your own style. Working in various mediums and in different techniques, I almost always work in a series of paintings these days. Searching, exploring, and refining variations of the same theme uncovers hidden nuances with layers of possibilities. Keep practicing, experimenting, growing, and adding new skills to your toolbox. Don't think too much about making art that fits with your specific style. Instead, just let your ability and art evolve naturally. Nobody improves in anything without practice. Don't worry about making mistakes. That's how we learn. Making something out of our mistakes is a good way to develop and enhance our creativity. A journal or sketchbook is a great way to gather ideas, experiment, and make mistakes. You don't have to show everyone your sketches. Do it for yourself and for your own improvement. Happy accidents, as we artists call them, often lead to a new idea, approach, or technique and can result in learning, growth, and something beautiful and unique. Ideas occur while you're working, not while you're sitting around waiting for things to happen. Draw using different techniques. Sometimes artists can get caught up drawing or painting using one particular technique, which limits their body of work. Sticking with one approach could hold you back from discovering other subjects that you like to draw. Think outside the box and draw inspiration from innovative artists around you. Determine which subjects you like to draw the most and concentrate on those. Express yourself in your drawings. Think of your emotions and favorite themes while you draw and try to translate that into your art.
I've got my reference here in front of me. These are the sketches that I've done so far. Here is the original reference for this exercise. And I read somewhere that you need to draw the same drawing 20 or more times in order to be proficient at it. So I decided I would do the same pose. I flip them or change them around, change the background. Um, this is the same bird, same pose as this, this here. This is the same pose and this is the same pose here. So I use the same pose but I try to do something different with the sketch. So I'm all set up here and I'm ready to start uh, doing some drawing on the UPO paper. I'm going to redraw this sketch of this hummingbird on a nest onto my UPO paper. I've got a piece of tile board here and I've taped my cardboard with my UPO paper on it to the board. I've got a little beanie baby here that I'm using to kind of keep this little sketchbook from sliding down. And I'm going to go ahead and start. I'm not, I'm not timing myself, but I'm going to try to do these quickly and loosely. So, um, and we'll see how it goes. So I'm going to start here holding my pencil like I would to conduct an orchestra. And I'm going to start by just ske lightly sketching in the um, major shapes here. Just lightly at first. Trying to stay loose. I wish I had the bird pointing the other way, or I wish I had started it further over to the side. Well, it's just a sketch. It's not supposed to be a masterpiece, and this is an experiment to see if I can do something kind of loose and sketchy in alcohol ink. Okay, so that probably took me about a minute. Now I'm going to come back in and refine it just a little bit. I don't, actually don't think it needs a whole lot more. Oh, I want to put that uh, branch in there. So let's keep it loose. We'll get carried away and get tight on it.
So you kind of race on this UPO and uh, doesn't really seem to affect alcohol ink that much, but you can if you erase and then try to do this in watercolor, it will affect the adhesion of your pigment. So unless if you're gonna do alcohol ink, I would not erase on UPO paper. In that case, you have to do your drawing on a separate piece of paper, uh, preferably a thin paper like copy paper, and then use a light tablet, a light box, or a window to trace off your drawing so that you don't have to do any erasing. If you do have to do erasing on UPO paper and you're using watercolor, you want to erase it with Dawn dish detergent. Okay, on this one, I'm going to dip my brush into some alcohol and I'm going into my dried palette and I'm going to pick up some pink sherbet here. I'm not going to put the blending solution on first on this one, I don't think. So I'm going to come in here and just put on some of this diluted pink color. This is pink sherbet, and I've added a little alcohol so that it's not super dark. I don't mind a little variation though. I want to try to leave some white in this. Okay, then I'm going to come in here and I'm going to pick up some blue. I think I'm going to use some stone wash. It's a little bit more purplish, but I like it. I said reminding myself I want to leave some white showing I want to add some variety to the color Okay, I think that's enough. That's a little dark up there. You can just go in and blot it some. <clears throat> I'm going to do the same colors that I have here because that way I can kind of compare the looks. I think I'm going to sprinkle a little bit of plain alcohol on here just for some added texture. I'm going to add some citrus now. go out of register and not be too concerned about getting it in the lines. I want this to look spontaneous, so with a control freak like me, that's hard sometimes, but I love spontaneous, so that's what I'm going to try to do. Um, now I'm going to also put some in here on the bird. This will be my lightest green. And again, I want to try to leave some white. Keep reminding myself. OK. 
Okay. I'm going to go with a little bit of a darker green. I'm going to use Meadow. And I've got, I just want to show you, I've got everything marked in my palette corresponding to my wells because it's very hard once they're dry to tell which color is which. So this is Meadow. That kind of bled in there, but I'm not going to worry about it. And again, I want to try to keep it as spontaneous looking and free as I can. It's okay to kind of go out of the lines a little bit. Makes it look more like a sketch. Maybe a little splatter of green in here. More meadow. And I'm going to cover up my lady here. Maybe not that much before I splatter. I want a little bit bigger area, so I need more liquid on my brush. See, the, more, the wetter the brush is, the bigger your splatter is going to be. You can actually even go in and <clears throat> add a few here and there. Okay. The spots start getting away from you, you can just take a paper towel and blot it a little bit. Okay. Um, I kind of like how I put some purple in here. So I'm going to come back in with, clean my brush up a little bit. And then come in here with some purple twilight. Add some alcohol to that so it's not super opaque. And here on the wings too, I have kind of a purplish color. I think that needs to be darker. Probably not that dark. like this color for up here a little bit. And I'm going to come in here with this purple color and I'm going to add some of these swirly marks here, the purple. Add some brown. See, there's quite a bit of brown in here. And I think I'll go with uh, more of a mushroom color, which isn't 
more of a grayish brown, I guess, and I'm going to add that in a few spots, trying to keep it loose. bit of that purplish brown up here. Okay, I'm looking at this and I think I want to add a little bit brighter yellow and a little bit of a more mid-value green in here. So I've got my Tim Holtz palettes here, my dried palettes, and I've got some 91% rubbing alcohol and I'm dipping my brush into my alcohol and then I'm coming over here to my palette and I'm picking up some sunshine yellow, bright yellow color. And I'm adding a little bit of alcohol to it to thin it out a little bit. And I'm going to come up here and I'm going to add a little bit of that yellow into my bird here. I want to get it a little bit brighter in a few spots. Then I'm going to come in here and I'm going to pick up a mid green. I think I'm going to try um, meadow here. And again, putting it in my little palette, adding a little bit of alcohol to it so it's not too opaque looking. And I'm going to come in here and I'm just going to dot this in. my bird clock here in the background okay not quite dark enough so I'm going to come back into my palette and I'm going to pick up a little bit of bottle to add to this, which should darken it some. Okay. Now I'm going to come in here and I'm going to darken this wing here and it looks like a brown color here on my sketch. So I'm just going I'm not going to clean my brush. I'm just going to add a little bit of brown to the green that I have here. Coming in here and just doing a couple of passes to add that darker value. And a little bit of a darker value down here, a little bit up here, maybe a little bit too 
this background area here. This is part of the nest here. Maybe a little bit of darker brown right in here. Okay, that's a little dark, so I'm just taking my paper towel and blotting that a little bit. A little bit of alcohol on my brush, dry it out, and then come in here and soften this a little bit. I like how I added a little bit of blue there. I don't know where I got that, but I'm going to do the same thing here. I'm going to pick up a little bit of sailboat blue and just add a little bit of color, maybe a little more color right in there. Again, drying my brush, dry brush, and then just coming in and blending that in a little bit. Okay, I still need to darken the beak. I'm going to come in with some pitch black. And I'm going to turn this going to turn this so it's easier for me to get to this area. Okay. Blending that a little bit more. I'm squinting at it, and I'm still seeing it's got some darker value over here. So I've got some of this darker blue on my brush right now. So I'm just going to come up here and just add a little bit into the body here. Again, going into my sailboat blue. Just adding a little bit of a darker value. And I think that's enough. That's It's just a sketch. Now, now I'm going to come in with my Micron pen. And I'm going to start out with an O1. And I'm going to try to keep it sketchy. Not so controlled. Um more short lines, a few squiggles here and there to make it look more spontaneous. Just leaf-like shapes that doesn't have to be perfect. You want it to look like this was just done very freely and um, quickly. Make this darker here, the underside of her tail and her body there, and here. I don't want to put my hand over there because it's the ink is probably pretty wet, so come back over on this side, add a few more embellishments.
up and around here. The other wing here. You can make the underside a little darker where the light isn't hitting it. I'm going to turn so that I can get into a better angle without going running into my wet ink there. Vary the width of your line. Skip a little bit. Now I want to add some detailing. I'm afraid that the ink is still a little bit wet, so rather than risk smudging it, I'm going to come in here and I'm going to rest my hand on a paper towel. Looking to see if I need to add any more value anywhere. And it looks like I could use a little bit more value in this area. So I'm going to come back in with a damp brush. This is, I believe, got some brown on it. And just come back over a little bit here. The light's coming from this direction, then this side of the hummingbird and this side of the nest is going to be a little bit more in shadow. I'm wondering I go in here yeah I can actually go back in and soften a few of the lines if I wanted to I want to darken this beak a little bit
was looking at it and on second thought, I think I want to darken the wings just a little bit. These two wings here. Maybe a little bit of brown. squinting at it and I thought it needed just a little bit more value here it's a little dull uh, and it is alcohol ink it should be brighter it's duller than the one that I did in watercolor. So, you know, I, I need to do something to jazz this up. I'm thinking again, going into my raspberry and bringing some of that color into the pink areas first to start. And uh, so I'm gonna bring it into my little palette here. A little bit of raspberry ink and uh, make it fairly light to start. And I'm just gonna come in here and add some, as if I was splattering, but this is gonna help me get it where I really want it. See how that bright pigment helps? Uh, I can see it already. It's really helping this piece to um, come alive. And do that too with some glue. like that brightness and uh, maybe here a little add a little bit more alcohol to this so it's not quite so bright and then I'm going to add a little bit more in here too and you're going to say well you know they don't really have that color but you have to use artistic license and you have to be a little bit bold and creative when you're doing this so that it's it becomes more than reality. It becomes um, a creation based on reality, but it takes on a whole new direction. So I'm going to bring in some aquamarine here. And I'm just going to touch this in. See how dark that value is compared to what I already have on here. all your dots are not all the same size and all the same shape vary it vary everything you can think of I still have a little blue on my brush but I'm, so I'm gonna come in here and add a little bit more of that same color into the leaf area and maybe a little bit into the darker areas on the bird. here on the side and then some more yellow into the bird 
and maybe some more yellow into the leaves. So I'm going to come back in with some sunshine yellow, which is pretty bright, warm yellow. And I'm just going to dot in a little bit of that yellow here and there. And that yellow could be a little cooler so I'm going to come in here to um, my palette and I'm going to get some dandelion which is a little bit cooler than the sunshine yellow Add a little bit of that to the leaf areas sure if I like this better after adding more color or not so I'm gonna stop where I'm where I am maybe add just a tad of splatter I'm wondering I don't think it really matters if I cover up anything it's got pretty much got texture everywhere and then um, you know, if I got it anywhere that I don't want it, I could take a paper towel with some alcohol on it, clean up the edges a little bit. If you don't wait too long, and if the pigment is not too staining, some of the pigments such as indigo, you're not going to be able to get it off, not on Upo. Um, but most of the other pigments, um, you know, they might leave a slight stain behind, but it shouldn't matter a whole lot. Yeah, I think I like that better. It's got a little bit more oomph to it. Sign up for classes online or in person to learn the basics. A formal education is not required for art, but it will help you learn the basic techniques like procedure, values, and composition. Practice constantly and frequently. Set aside some time every day to seriously draw something. To start, you can do eight drawings in 15 minutes. Check out my short YouTube videos and discover how you can drastically increase your drawing skills when you draw gestures for just 15 minutes a day. Get honest feedback from teachers and other artists. Even though your style is unique to you, it's important that you don't let your ego get in the way of actually improving. Though art is all subjective, there are things that you can do to improve your techniques, regardless of your experience. Have open and honest conversations about your drawings and your art. Ask how it might be improved and take the advice if you feel that it's valid. 
Don't let a suggestion hurt your feelings. Instead of being upset, examine what's being said and consider how it could improve your art. It's great to follow along with a tutorial to learn techniques and refine your skills, as long as you give the instructor credit. But once you've gotten the basics down, you should try to develop your own style that is unique to you. Take inspiration from different artists, different styles and different techniques and combine your favorite elements from each of them. Don't become a carbon copy of another artist. Practice and experimentation will lead to results that you may be able to incorporate into your own distinctive manner of expression. I hope these tips will be helpful to you and it will give you something to think about. I will include links to some inspirational posts that I have on drawing and creating your own unique style. I will list those below this video. I hope you find inspiration and creativity and making mistakes to be your good friends in the coming year. Thanks for joining me. Happy creating. Bye-bye. <laughs>